the review courtesy of Brendan himself. He posted a Twitter post here, kind of soppy and shit. I was on the fence about coming to Skankfest and honestly terrified for a variety of reasons. What a weekend. Hashtag Skankfest Vegas was the best comedy festival I've ever been part of. The fans were amazing. If the boys will have me, I'll always do Skankfest. For those of you that come up and gave me your love, thank you. Means the world. Luis J. Gomez, what you and Legion of Skanks have built is second to none. Thanks to everything. Love you guys. Till next year. And he posted a cool picture of himself doing the whole... um. Uh, lean back laughing rogan laughing that he now does um sitting alongside the Skankfest guys and on the far left there is the resident cuck cucking resident um which is brian callan what this review kind of tells you is just how utterly i'm gonna say somewhat pathetic brendan is in a way you know he's obviously someone that's really easily easy to not like but he is also incredibly pathetic in that he was terrified this guy is a like alleged former top 10 UFC heavyweight, right? 6'2 something, 6'3, 6'4, 250 pounds. And he was legitimately terrified of random people on the internet and the Skankfest audience because some of them maybe don't think he's funny and shit. He thinks people not liking your comedy or people thinking that you're a douchebag or not liking the way that you conduct yourself on the internet, that equals them wanting to beat you up and again a former trained martial artist who competed at the highest levels was afraid of fans calling him out and maybe laughing at his comedy to the point where he was worried about going to Skankfest and, and and at the last minute was probably considering whether or not he should go or not that says more about him than anything that he would equate people like myself and maybe people on on reddits and stuff calling out his behavior calling out how awful he sounds and some of the stories that he shares or calling out some of his conspirators and his co-hosts and his friends in the comedy scene he would see that as a threat of violence that says everything about the guy taken from um, the recent episode of the short show where he kind of reviews um, what happened at Skankfest and kind of gives his opinion on it let me play it for you now we are live once again i am fresh off the plane from las vegas nevada where your boy was at skank fest um i'm sure we'll break it down more on firing the kid but it was a phenomenal time um if you look at my instagram posts i had reservations about going i was you don't have to go to it jen i okay. just that confused me um it was just a great time um, I was definitely uh, hesitant about going, and uh, boy, am I glad that uh, I didn't post out and that I went. So I guess the reservations everybody had or the doubts people had about him not going were warranted. Because even though you could give him a lot of credit for going, clearly him saying what he's saying now is proof that he was worried about going. He was having second thoughts. He was doubting about going, which is insane to me because I said from the beginning that he should have went he always should have went. There should have been no option for him not to go because it could have been such an easy win for him because my main thinking behind it was I don't think the Legion of Skanks um, gas digital fan base are that balls deep into Brendan the way we are. But I don't think they, they're that fully invested. So he could easily win them over by just being a good sport, allowing himself to get ribbed on stage, laughing at himself and then continuing on. It could have been perfectly fine. So he would, I think do himself a lot of favors and earn a lot of grace on the internet if he went there and did that but obviously in his brain going to a crowd that isn't his being around people that he doesn't know or that he's not familiar with is something very scary and to me that says a lot about him and a lot about how he's been coddled in the comedy scene all of it is just odd to me all of it is just strange it doesn't really make any sense really but hey it kind of is what it is let's continue because um Best County Festival I've ever been part of. I've, I've been at, you know, all of them. Uh, you name it. No, please, you name them. Which ones have you been to? Moon Tower Comedy Festival you dropped out of. Just for laughs, I don't think he's ever been to. What comedy festival has he ever been to? I, w I want him to name them, please. Again, such a weird thing to lie about. I've been to all of them. You named them. Which one? Please, tell us. Your boy's been in these comedy festivals. And this is hands down the best one. I think just the environment uh Luis gomez created the, the comics it's not so like weird networking where people are worried to mess up and you know because you have big networks there and it's like this whole kind of you know the, these other kind of festivals are just they've changed man but uh when it comes to uh skank fest 
<clears throat> it's all for the fans, which I think makes the the biggest difference. And boy, do they have some loyal fans. And uh, yeah, I, I went into the lion's den and um, <laughs> played around with some lions. Hear how he's describing this. This, to me, is the perfect representation of probably why Brennan is never going to be funny. Because this might be the first time in his entire life he's ever not played for the home crowd. Because if you listen to what somebody like a Unique says, which I'm not too sure if it's right, but Unique says it has this theory that Brendan doesn't actually get booked to play comedy clubs. He books them himself. That's the really crazy thing about it. And that may explain why he will never be funny because he only performs for his own fans. He never does what other comedians do where they just pop up. I forgot what the term is in other clubs just to kind of get some time on stage or whatever it may be. He only performs for his home base for the majority of the sets that he does, which is a really odd thing to do, to be fair, because, you know, part of the reason why you, you try to sharpen yourself is to perform in front of people who don't know you to kind of gauge where your jokes are at with people that aren't your fans because the majority of people that are going to, I don't know, it's just weird. Let's just continue. In uh, Lewis and Big J and Dave Smith and Annie Letterman and just all these monsters. Joe List is there. Uh, DeStefano came by. Tim Dillon. You just got monsters upon monsters. And uh, I brought Big J Shab with me, which uh, didn't make too much sense because, you know, he's the the tour manager. So he sells the whiskey, sells merch. Well, we weren't doing that there. I literally brought him just in case I was attacked. That Do you know how pathetic and sad that is? That a former UFC fighter has to bring their big brother to a comedy festival full of comedy nerds and alcoholics and drug addicts in terms of the comedians to defend him you know how pathetic that is and honestly think about it this way most of the people online who don't like brendan only don't like him because of the person that he is so it's like people are saying hey we don't like you because of your personality because of the things that you've said because of how your career has been propped up by all the people in the industry and maybe for some people it's sort of like a it's sort of like a micro micro microcosm or kind of a representation of what regular life is like right people undeserving of success getting all the success all the good things happening to the worst people so maybe people latch onto that sort of stuff and kind of see you as an example of it and hate you even more but mostly it's because of that it's not because you're quote unquote good looking or because you played sports and shit it's mostly because you come across as a pretty much a not the bestest of guys online so it's words people saying words about you and that's enough for people for you to bring your big brother to a comedy festival to defend you physically in case somebody poses a physical threat and you're a trained martial artist of the highest level really wow that's how nervous i was and boy was it I, we did not need i'm glad jay came because you know we have so much fun together on the road but um we he, he wasn't needed the the fans were so dope so cool and you know gomez told me that dave smith told me that big jay told me that but you know they say that i'm like yeah that's, they're nice to you guys you know people are mean to me but uh shout out to the skank fest fan base man it was it was unreal it was unreal i will always do skank fest like i said on my Instagram always post. i will never not do it i'd always uh always be an honor to be part of it so just glad i did it man anyway well, you, you got the gist of what you're saying um in totality i think it was obviously a net good thing that he went it's good that he went. It's just really dumb that it took him this long to just hang around regular comedians to put himself amongst, to put himself in a quote unquote lion's den, to be open to having people laugh at him and mock him for his done things or for the stupid things he may have said or done in the past. For it to have taken this long to finally have a bit of self-awareness, a bit of um, humility and shit is kind of wild, to be fair. For a grown-ass adult to only get to this point, and again, let's let's not go too far with this, right? Let's not, you know, jump on the bandwagon and start sucking him off too hard. He's only here, he's only doing this because his career has gone the way it's gone. If he was still in Brendan's, if he was still in joe rogan's good books the way he was in the beginning he wouldn't need to go on Skankfest. he's only going on Skankfest now because joe's moved away he's not kind of you know he's fallen out of favor with certain people because maybe the bobby lee thing the kalala thing 
the Annie thing, who knows? It's definitely changed for him. Maybe the association with Brian Callen and Chris Aaliyah hasn't helped him. But he's he's not in the same place he was before with his peers, right? So this is the only reason why he went to Skankfest because he's kind of down on his luck. And now that he's down on his luck, he's gone to Skankfest and he's realised, oh, these guys aren't as bad as I thought they were. Being around regular people isn't that bad. Being around other regular comedians isn't that bad either. Oh, I should do this more often. That's the really sad thing about it. Like he's been coddled so long, so long that he only now finally realized that, hey, maybe being around some regular people, regular community people is the best thing to do. And think about this as well, right? Think about this too also. Think about this too also. <laughs> think about this too also. That being coddled by his community of people is the proper reason why partly his career has gone the way it's gone because oddly enough everybody from the fire and the kids subreddit to people on channels to people in my fucking live stream and chat and stuff have been saying from the beginning really and truly you're not it's not a crime to be a piece of shit it's not a crime to be a douchebag it's not a crime to be unfunny the only crime really involved in it is the refusal to acknowledge those things as true to refuse to acknowledge that maybe those are the reasons why people don't like you and you have played a direct role a direct part in getting to that position and just changing it because if he was a little bit just even five percent more software than he was today maybe it wouldn't have gone as bad as it gone from his career so far he would have been perfectly fine because somehow despite all of his bad personality traits he always seems to kind of figure it out anyway Despite all of his mistakes in business and maybe his career and stuff, he always seems to kind of land on his feet anyway. So imagine if he was on top of that 5% more self aware where he'd be. He'd be so much better in position, honestly. And it's taken him only on this till this far to get to a place where, you know what? Maybe hanging out with regular people isn't that bad. Maybe being around regular comedians isn't that bad. Maybe laughing at, them, at myself doesn't mean that you know i'm inviting trolls and haters and people that want to push harm to my family to my house maybe it just is a bit of harmless ribbing because guess what i'm pretty easy to laugh at i do a lot of dumb things i say a lot of dumb things i get it that's all it would take and he's only taken him this long to figure it out so that probably is, says a lot more about him than us i would assume but again you know what what do i know <laughs> 